Kevin, Adriana Rotella, Lead Instructor Trainer here for Marathu Head Office. So I'm here to talk about the exercise of the month, which this month is snake. So snake is an advanced level exercise performed on a reformer. So what we're going to talk about is I'm going to show you the exercise and then we'll talk about some tips and tricks to be able to execute this exercise efficiently. Um, and then some cues that you can use with your clients to better help them connect with the exercise. So we'll start with the setup of the reformer. So we'll go on regular footwork settings. Okay, the footwork is going to be in position number three. So that is one up from the bottom, not all the way down. Okay, now spring tension here. You can go anywhere between one to two springs. So this is going to depend on size of your client, strength, of course. Um, and you want to remember that this is a unique exercise. There's a few where um, if they're not as strong, yes, you'll definitely go a little bit lighter. But you want to remember that sometimes lighter makes it more challenging because we have less support. So you might find you have to play with the springs um, to find that perfect uh, tension for you. So I'm going to go uh, one red, one blue. So that's one and a half. Sometimes, depending on the day, I'll go down to a quarter. So today I'm going to go one and a half. Um, and then the setup of the positioning, um, getting into the starting position. I'm going to show you how to get into this exercise from the floor. Now, if you have a client that is doing this for the first time um, or second time, you can get them to stand on the carriage and get into the starting position from there, which will definitely be easier. Um, I'm going to show you the ideal way of getting into the exercise, which is mounting uh, the reformer straight from standing. Okay, now the options for the hands here, you can have the hand on top of the opposite shoulder rest. Now, if you're working with somebody who typically tends to hold a lot of tension in their wrist, um, because the hand can sink a little bit on top, okay, because of the softness here, you can also have them as an option, bring the arm down to just loop around the front and base of that shoulder rest, okay? Other hand here is going to wrap around the corner of the reformer. So now here, if you are working with an SPX model at home, um, then your hand won't be able to tuck underneath the carriage, which is totally fine. You can just hold on wrapping around the outside. Okay, now my foot that's closest to the foot bar here is going to go to the back edge of the foot bar. And I do want to make sure that my whole foot is connected to the foot bar, not just the ball of the foot or the toes, just for safety here. Now, when I jump up into the starting position, I'm going to bring my bottom foot, wrap it around the front foot, and I'm going to lift and shift my torso to try and get my pelvis as square as possible to the reformer. Okay? So I'm going to demo the exercise uh, two times, and then we'll come up and talk about some of the details. So my hand is here. I'm going to pop up. My foot goes in front, and now I'm here. I'm going to inhale, press the carriage away, extending my spine at the back. Exhale to pull it all the way back in. Okay, so doesn't look like a super hard, challenging exercise, but it is advanced for a reason. So uh, we're going to talk about what is going to push the carriage away. So here, as with all of the other advanced exercises, this is full body. That's what makes the advanced exercises so amazing is that we're not just working one part of the body, we're working the whole body all together. And this is a perfect ex exercise example of that. So what's pushing the carriage away is going to start right from the legs. So we know our legs typically are stronger than our upper body. So we want to use that. Okay. You want to be careful not to power this exercise through your arms. So we start with the legs. What you're going to cue your clients to do is really zip the inner thighs together and start to initiate from the hip extensors to start to push the carriage away. So the hips are going from this flexed position down into a more neutral position. Okay, once the hips have extended into a plank-like position, the secondary part to this exercise is the articulation of the spine. Okay, so you wanna make sure that one happens just before the other. I'm not gonna break it down and make it completely separate, but the initiation comes from the legs, then we articulate from the base of the spine all the way to the crown of the head. Now, the full exercise is done with that beautiful extension at the back of the reformer. But as a teaching tip, if your client is trying this for the first time, I would bring them into one long plank position first, get them comfortable with that, 
and then have them come back in. And then almost as a progression, I would say, okay, now we're going to add in that last piece, which is the extension. Okay. So kind of taking it in baby steps or, um, which is actually a prep or a modification for this exercise is just coming into that long line first. Okay. So now breath pattern is a two breath pattern as we often see in the advanced. So that promotes the fluidity and the continuous movement uh, and flow that we like to see in the advanced repertoire. So now let's talk about some teaching tips here. When I'm teaching my clients, definitely I'm gonna be in a position where I can spot them. So that's typically me standing here with my hands just lightly around their hips so that they can still feel me and feel confident that they're not, the carriage is not gonna run away from them. Okay, I might also stand pretty close to the carriage so that if they are going pretty fast, with my bottom leg, I can provide a little bit of a drag on the carriage so that it's not going too fast. Okay, I just wanna be careful with that. So then I'm gonna use my hands as teaching tools. So if my hands are here by the hips, I'll cue them. So I might give them a little tap on their hamstrings to say, okay, activate your glutes and hamstrings, start to push the carriage away. Then what I like to do is take my hands and I'll just do a little like walking up their spine so that they understand what I'm saying because we know we don't have a lot of time once they're out there to give them a lot of uh, cues. As, as I'm saying, articulate from tail to head, I'm walking my hands from bottom to top up their spine so that they can quickly respond to that. Inhale as the carriage goes out, then exhale. We want to initiate the movement from the head. So I might tap the back of their head, cue them to initiate by looking down at the knees and then using the abdominals to flex the spine and pull the carriage back in, okay? So you do have the assistance from the springs to help you come back. So this is where you'll have to play. Um, with the tension that you're choosing, a lighter spring might be easier on the upper body, harder to support the body when you're going out, and then of course harder to pull the carriage back in. But on the flip side, if you have too much uh, weight, like two springs or one and three quarters, they might not have the strength to push against the spring tension. So they'll have more support, but maybe perhaps less, less uh, strength to be able to combat that heavy tension. So you'll just have to play with it. Okay, so now um, preps and modifications. So just like we see in our manuals, just coming to that long line is a really good prep and then progressing to that extension. Um, one of the things that I did wanna talk about is that when they're going to the extension, one of the common mistakes that we see is that instead of extending the spine, we see dropping of the hips, okay? So you don't want to see that once they're out, in this long line, as they extend, they're really dropping and collapsing their hips. Okay, so we see that one a lot. So I would maybe support their pelvis with my hand to say, don't move down anymore, any lower with your pelvis, but now open the sternum towards the back of the room. So giving them little, um, you know, imagery type cues of knowing where to extend from. Okay, um, the second thing that we see quite often is that once they're out in that long line, they continue to move the carriage forward with the arms, which actually makes this a really challenging position to be able to hold, and they don't know why it's so hard. So make sure that the hands are gonna stay relatively underneath the shoulders for maximum support. Okay, so perhaps some modifications going into uh, the mods in the manual. So we have that just coming to that long line, definitely going into a four breath pattern instead of a two breath pattern. So that gives the client a little bit more time to break the exercise down and learn it piece by piece instead of trying to rush through and make the breath without really focusing on what they're doing, okay? So definitely start with the four breath pattern, just come to that long line, starting standing on top of the machine uh, instead of from the floor. Um, other exercises now that you can think about um, if you're wanting to introduce this type of exercise to strengthen the body, I would definitely say upstretch. Um, very similar in the way that we extend the hips, then the spine almost separately, or as a like a one-two punch. Okay, and then using the abdominals to pull the carriage back in, but definitely a little bit easier. So that would be a great one to start with. Anything to build the upper body and to strengthen the rest of the body in a plank type position. So long stretch would be a really good uh, prep exercise for this as well. Okay, and then we also know that snake is a prep or a precursor to the next exercise that follows on the chart or in the manual or in the sequence, 
of the advanced, which is the twist, which is uh, so challenging. Okay, so that's pretty much it, I think, for the snake. Uh, beautiful exercise, stick with it. With all of the advanced exercises, it does take practice. Um, so stick with it. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. And uh, that's it. Enjoy your day. Thank you so much for joining us.